Hello guys, welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into derived trading using the Volatility 25 Index. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more trading insights. Let's start by understanding the basic structure of the market. We'll begin with the building block of technical analysis, the candlestick. But before we do that, I will show you how to set your trading tool for specific trading without necessarily searching the tools on the left-hand side, making you waste time while wanting to do your analysis. So with that said, you can see me zoom the chat for easy visibility. You can spot this momentum candlesticks showing a downtrend. We will look deeper about them, how the candlesticks open and close. And without further ado, let's get started. We'll be working with the one hour time frame today. This provides a good balance between short-term price fluctuations and longer-term trends. Why choose the one-hour time frame? The one-hour time frame offers a compelling balance between short-term price fluctuations and longer-term trends that IT also has. Reduce noise. Compared to shorter time frames like 5 or 15 minutes, the one-hour time frame filters out much of the noise caused by short-term price fluctuations. This allows traders to focus on more significant price movements. While not as sensitive to short-term price changes as shorter time frames, the one-hour time frame provides a clearer view of underlying trends. Traders can more easily identify and follow the direction of the market for the setting of the tools. Let me check that one. The important tools that I need to use so I can see the long position. I will add it to my favorites and you can see they are all aligning very well. Add all including the short position, plus the date range. It's an important tool, the price range also. Let me check another one. The text tool is very important. Add the arrow maker to very much important. Add the arrow marks left. And I'm just clicking the star button to add them to my favorites. So as you can see on my right, it's showing very well all those tools that I think are necessary to me. So you can also do it by setting all the necessary tools that you can use to analyze markets rather than going checking into the left side tool. So I'll proceed clicking and adding all the tools like rectangles, the path, and then let me the arrow, the Fibonacci retracement, the trend lines, the arrow, the horizontal line, the horizontal array, and the cross line. Having your trading tools organized in a single location on your analysis page offers several practical benefits. Number one is efficiency. When your tools are easily accessible, you can quickly switch between them without wasting time searching. This efficiency can be crucial during fast paced market conditions. Number two is clarity. A well organized workspace reduces clutter and improves clarity. By grouping related tools together, you can avoid confusion and make more informed decisions. And number three, customization. You can customize your tool layout to suit your personal preferences and trading style. This allows you to create a workspace that feels comfortable and efficient. Number four is consistency. Having your tools consistently organized helps you maintain a consistent approach to your analysis. This can reduce errors and improve your overall trading performance. So always identify the tools you use most frequently and place them in a prominent position on your analysis page. You can also use use shortcuts. Learn keyboard shortcuts for frequently used tools to further streamline your workflow. Experiment. Try different layouts and configurations to find what works best for you. By following these tips and organizing your trading tools effectively, you can create a more efficient and productive trading environment. So the next thing now is knowing the structure of the market, how it is formed starting from knowing the formation of the candlesticks. I will first pick the tool I will be using to point out a specific area for clarification. To begin with is this bearish candlestick. This point is called open with a bearish candlestick opened. So allow me to first mark the areas that are most important to know in a candlestick. Then this area is the close of this candlestick. Sorry for that. I did not want that line. So let me choose the correct line and place it on that point. So as I have told you, that's the close of the candlestick that... Then I will again pick the line and point the highest point the bearish candlestick went. So now at that point is a place where the candle tick went at its highest. Let me place the line at its best point so that I do not mislead any beginner trader. 
I hope we are all together in this following clearly to full understand the formation of a candlestick. And if you are learning something from this channel, please consider liking this video and do not forget to share it to your friends. Invite them to this channel for them to have a clear understanding of the market. Then of course with the next is the lowest point that the candlestick then went. So again I will pick the line again and specifically show you the exact point it went. That's the point but let me change the direction to the opposite to align it with the other lines for easier labeling. I guess the direction is awesome for easier labeling. So as I am doing, so let me explain a bit on this to start with is to know what is a candlestick. A candlestick chart is a powerful tool for visualizing price action. Each candlestick represents a specific time period, e.g. a day, hour, or minute, and provides information about the open, high, low, and closing prices. The body. This is the rectangular part of the candlestick. I will label it. You will see it. In terms of the color, green or white, indicates a closing price higher than the opening price bullish. While like this, red, which we are talking and labeling it, it may also be black, in some charts, and it indicates a closing price lower than the opening price and as. I said it's called A bearish. Candlestick. Talking of the length. The length of the body represents the difference between the opening and closing prices. A longer body suggests a more significant price movement. Now I will label the wicks you will see them to be direct on the wicks. This are lines extending above and below the body. And we have the upper wick. And this indicates the highest price reached during the period. When we talk of the lower wick, it indicates the lowest price reached during the period. So when you are doing your analysis and you see the open on the candlestick, know that it begins at the opening price, then follows the price movement. And as trading progresses, the price may fluctuate. And with this, if the price rises above the opening price, the upper wick extends upward. And if the price falls below the opening price, the lower wick extends downward to the close of the candlestick. Dot. And when you spot this, we say that that's the end of the period and the candlestick closes at the final price. Note that if the closing price is lower than the opening price, the body is filled in red or black, indicating a bearish signal. So with that said, I am doing all this labeling so that one can fully understand very well. And if you have any questions after this video, please don't hesitate. Just reach out to me and I will be free to answer and clarify well. In that case, for a quick recap of all that we have discussed in a quick summary is that the key components to remember are open, the point where the trading period begins, high, the highest price reached during the period, low, the lowest price reached during the period. Close. The point where the trading period ends. And the bearish candlestick formation is one that open. The candlestick opens at a certain price. Price movement. The price fluctuates throughout the trading period. Close. The candlestick closes below its opening price, indicating a bearish sentiment. That's the body there. Let me position it well, well on the center of the candlestick. Then, this are the wicks I was talking about. This one which we said is the upper wick. Then this one we said as the lower wick. So I will label them all as wicks. So we that I believe you can now identify bearish candlesticks and you now know that a bearish candlestick suggests that selling pressure has overcome buying pressure during the trading period. This could be a sign of a potential downward trend or a short term price correction.
Important note, while a single bearish candlestick can be a bearish indicator, it's generally more reliable to consider it in conjunction with other technical analysis tools and patterns. Always conduct thorough research and consider multiple factors before making trading decisions. And with that, we can now look at the bullish candlestick, and the same explanation is just the opposite as that of the bearish candlestick. With that said, I will clear all this, and we have the discussion for a bullish candlestick. We can now spot the bullish candlesticks, shown using the green color. And for that reason, let's check the best candlestick. We can discuss and have an illustration about it. We will talk of this bullish candlestick over here. As we did, I will use a line to point out this is the open of that candlestick. Then this is the close of it. Then here is the highest point the candlestick went. Then this is the lowest point that the candlestick went.
So talking of how, how the candlestick it opens and moves down the up after the wick, his form goes up and then forms the upper wick then closes. And the same thing repeats itself for the other candlesticks. So with that, let's talk of the key components. To check on the bullish candlestick they are, open, the point where the trading period begins, high, the highest price reached during the period, low, the lowest price reached during the period, close, the point where the trading period ends, and then, bullish candlestick formation, open, the candlestick opens at a certain price, price movement, price fluctuates throughout the trading period. Close. The candlestick closes above its opening price, indicating a bullish sentiment. So on the next is to know how the market moves, and this is a good illustration I have drawn, to start with for an upward movement. The market creates a higher high and higher low, as it makes an upward move. So using the path tool we can draw the movement showing higher highs and lower lows. Higher highs and lower lows. Again higher highs and higher lows. This it shows an uptrend. As we proceed, just look as I am doing for you to understand how to do it very carefully and simply. I will keep labeling every move I am making. direction of the trend. Let me draw the trend lines to show it way better. And it should show two touches for confirmation in case on the real market. Next now I will show you the break of structure represented by the BOS. Since the uptrend, structure is characterized by a series of higher highs and higher lows. A break of structure occurs when the price fails to create a new higher high or higher low indicating a potential reversal or pause in the uptrend. So when you clearly establish the presence of an uptrend resembling like this by observing a series of higher highs and higher lows, watch for failure. Look for signs of failure to maintain the uptrend. This could be a lower low after a higher high, a lower high after a higher low, a failure to break above a previous resistance level, then confirm with volume. Volume can provide additional confirmation of a break of structure. A decrease in volume during a break of structure can be a bearish signal, indicating a potential loss of momentum.
This are known as pull bags. Downtrend. Also look for the same break of structure movements with the market showing higher lows and lower lows with this knowledge of lows. A downward trend is characterized by a series of lower highs and lower lows. Know that when a downtrend is established, it often presents opportunities for traders to profit from the declining price.
I hope all the labeling is communicating something. And with that, now I guess you know how it works, know the structure of markets.